That's what Messiah did. He taught us the difference between holy and unholy. He taught us how to act clean or unclean. There are too many people out there today that just are not doing that. They think, well, I'm saved by the blood of Messiah, so there's no such thing as unclean. Everything's clean. They use the verse, well, if, as long as I pray over it, everything's clean. No, if he called it unclean, if he called it unholy, guess what? We are not to have anything to do with that. And that's people, that's food, and that's dress, that's everything. We need to get this right. We need to realize this. There are consequences. Torah Life Ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. Hello everybody, it's Paul Neeson with Torah Life Ministries giving you next week's Torah portion or this coming Shabbat's Torah portion. And we are going to be reading from Leviticus 21.1 to 24.23. And we see here in this reading, this is the 31st reading of this year, going through the whole Torah, starting at the beginning in Genesis, going through the first five books of the scriptures. And in this particular Torah reading, we see the instructions that are given for the priest how to remain set apart and remain holy. Because in the last Torah portion we saw a wonderful creator telling all the people of Israel, all the people of Israel, including the priests who were part of Israel, the leaders of Israel, he told them all, you are to be holy because I am holy. Well, now it goes on to tell the priest how to be holy. Last week it told the people how to be holy, or the last Torah portion. This one is telling the priest how to be holy. So now the instructions are given for the priest to be set apart, not only from the, from the disobedient people of Egypt and the other disobedient people to Torah, but even set apart from Israel. And they're told the things they must do to be set apart. And it goes into everything from, from, from how they should dress, from who they should marry and who they shouldn't marry. And it goes all the way down and it talks about uh, the things they must do to be considered holy, which there was a higher standard for them. But it goes on to see, it even talks about what they should eat and what they shouldn't eat and how they can eat it. And if a relative died versus a stranger dying, because if you touch a dead body, you were considered unclean for a certain amount of time. So it even gets into those instructions and guidelines. Uh, but then it says something pretty amazing here in Leviticus, in Leviticus 22.9. It was talking about what they could eat and what they can't eat. And it says, uh, the Kohadim uh, must observe this charge of mine. Otherwise, if they profound it, and profounding it is by not following it, by disobeying it, it says, they will bear the consequences of their sin for doing it and die. So one of the consequences for this particular thing they were told to do, which was talking about uh, eating the holy things or not eating the holy things, but it was just one of the consequences was death of this. But the main thing I want to focus on is it says they will bear the consequences of their sin. And that, just like we saw in the last reading and this reading is, we all are going to bear the consequences for our disobedience to his word. So some people might say we're not saved by works, and you're right, we're saved by the blood of Messiah. But you're still going to bear the consequences of your disobedience. You're diso being disobedient to his word. There are consequences and there are blessings and curses in the scriptures. And we're blessed by obeying and we're cursed by disobeying. Those curses are the consequences of not listening to his word. Let's go on and move on and see what it says in Leviticus 23. It says in Leviticus 23.1, Our Creator said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel, the designated times of our Creator, which you are to proclaim as holy, are my designated times. Uh, so, and then it goes on to explain about all the feast days and the appointed times. Now, when I go to many churches around the world today and to speak or just to visit, none of them even know about the appointed times other than following the appointed times because they're not reading their scripture. They're not following the word. And it goes on in this whole chapter of Leviticus 23 to teach what those appointed feast days and times are and how to follow them. And it starts off and it goes really with the Shabbat, the weekly Shabbat, every seventh day to take that rest. And then it talks about the Shabbats, the high holy Shabbats, which are the beginning and the end of many of the feast days, which we are told to take a special rest and do no work. 
And then it goes on to talk about uh, the, uh, the other major feast times or appointed times. And who are they appointed by is what we have to think about. They're appointed by our Creator. And He told us to keep these days throughout all our generations. But that wasn't happening. So it says here in, in Leviticus 23, 24, Moses announced to the people of Israel the designated times of our wonderful Creator. And anyone that reads the scriptures can clearly see that and know what they are. The fact that people don't know what they are just simply shows me that they're not reading their scriptures. I mean, it says in the scriptures, I will reveal to you the things that you need to know and you must know. And it's clearly revealed to us these designated times. Let's move on to another part here in Leviticus 24.10. And this is another thing we want to we wanna re realize. It says, in Leviticus 10, There was a man who was the son of a woman of Israel and an Egyptian father. He went out among the people of Israel, and this son of a woman of Israel had a fight in the camp with the man of Israel, in the course of which the son of the woman of Israel uttered the name yad heh vi -Heh, in a curse. It says, So they brought him to Moses, and they put him under God until a wonderful creator would tell him what to do. And, and he said to Moses, Take the man who, who, who cursed outside the camp and have everyone uh, that heard him lay their hands on his head and have the entire community stone him. And it goes on to say in Leviticus 24:15, Then tell the people of Israel, Whoever curses the Creator will bear the consequences of his sin. Whoever blasphemes the name of Yahweh must be put to death. Now this wasn't telling us not to use the name, this was telling us not to curse the name. That is an important thing because we're told to use the name in a holy way and just not to curse the name. And if you curse the name, another consequence of this sin is death, which was many of the consequences of the sin in the scriptures. And we elaborate on this even more, this whole concept of, of keeping the commands and, and suffering the consequences of the things you don't, just basically, last week's Torah portion and this Torah portion is one particular thing we have to focus on. And that is spoken about in Ezekiel 44, specifically Ezekiel 44:23. And this is the foundation of all scripture. This is the foundation of all life. This is what we must realize and remember and never forget. Ezekiel 44.23 says, They are to teach my people the difference between holy and common and enable them to distinguish between clean and unclean. That's what it comes down to. That's what His Word teaches us. The difference between clean and unclean, good and bad, holy and unholy. So when we learn that and we act upon that, we will be blessed. That's it. That's what Messiah did. He taught us the difference between holy and unholy. He taught us how to act clean or unclean. And it's up to us to take that action to make that happen. There are too many people out there today that just are not doing that. They think, well, I'm saved by the blood of Messiah, so there's no such thing as unclean. Everything's clean. They use the verse, well, if, as long as I pray over it, everything's clean. No, if he called it unclean, if he called it unholy, guess what? We are not to have anything to do with that. And that's people, that's food, and that's dress, that's everything. We need to get this right. We need to realize this. There are consequences. And we'll just be blessed if one of those consequences is death. Because if that consequence is not death, we are in trouble because we're going to suffer those consequences for a long time. And there are people running around with diseases, discomfort, sadness. They're just lost. And that's the consequence of their disobedience to His Word. You know, you might think, well, I'm saved, I'm a believer, why do I suffer from these things? Well, first of all, what we look at as suffering in, in, in our human vision is not always suffering in His vision. He has a reason for everything. However, many times we're the own uh, bearer of our consequences because of the sinful life we're living. And you might think you're going to a church and you're one of those holy people, but if you don't know His Word, if you don't know His appointed times, which He tells us to keep throughout all the generations, if you're not keeping the Shabbat and you know about it, well, there's a reason why these things are happening. 
It's not his will for us to live in curses. It's his will for us to follow his word and be blessed. You know, in James 4, 17, it says to know good and not do it to him. It is sin. Maybe you didn't know these things I'm speaking about, but now you do. And if you're a believer, you need to be reading your scriptures. And if you read your scriptures, it's quite clear what we need to be doing. To know good and not do it to him is sin. Are you following his word? Are you keeping his word? As it says in the scriptures, grace without works is dead. Think about that for a second. All right, everybody, this is Paul Neeson with this week's Torah Porsche. Have a great Shabbat this coming week. If you have any comments or questions, post them below the video. Till then, everybody, Shalom, Shalom. Come out of the world, Messiah people seek the truth.